The fox spirit is a commonly known entity in East Asia, known to be a prolifically mischievous shapeshifter with magical abilities, who uses its prowess to trick others by usually disguising itself as a beautiful young woman in order to seduce men for the purposes of just pure mischief and or to consume their bodies or spirits. In China, this fox spirit is called Huli Jing or fox spirit, which are nine-tailed fox spirits who, dependent on the situation, can be a good or a bad omen. The nine tails in Chinese lore symbolize abundant progeny. Unlike in Japanese and Korean lore, a Huli Jing can take the form of a woman or a man who is either young or old. When a Huli Jing appears in human form, however, it can be assumed that it is up to no good. Fox characteristics of the Huli Jing can sometimes slip through despite their transformation into a human with ears or a tail emerging from its human form. Thus, the Chinese proverb, a fox's tail is not easily hidden. These fox spirits have the ability to create illusions, glamours, human speech, disappear, reappear, turn into a mist, communicate with the heavens, and the power of immortality. The most common type of malicious trick used by Huli Shing is to take human form for the purposes of seduction. Sexual congress is one of the ways foxes can take human essence or vitality. Stealing another's life force can also be accomplished while remaining in fox form, however, as Huli Shing are known to take their victim's breath as they sleep. This is similar to what we, in my Gullah Geechee culture, call a hag, and what other cultures may call demons, shadow people, duppies, or jinn. As the cradle of East Asian civilization, the elements of the nine-tailed foxes spread naturally from China then to later developing territories like Japan and Korea. Cultures around the world foretell of stories of spirits that shapeshift into humans, often taking the form of animals. The world's eldest narrative is the Epic of Gilgamesh, a story which served as the blueprint of all modern and ancient religion, where Gilgamesh is both biblical Nimrod and Noah. And in this epic, there are accounts of shapeshifters. It is a story about the Anunnaki, after all. The Europeans and the indigenous of western states have their werewolves, lichens, and skinwalkers who shift from human to wolf form and vice versa. The Mesoamericans call these people Nagua, or human beings with the power to shapeshift into their tonal animal counterpart, a word deriving from the word Nahuali, which is an indigenous religious practitioner identified later by Spanish colonizers as magicians. Meso and South Americans have their lures of weir pumas and weir jaguars, or humans that turn into pumas and jaguars and back into humans again. Africans have the weir hyenas, and South Asia, down in India, there are lures of weir tigers. The Caribbean has stories of cats turning into humans, and duppies, who are entities that can manifest as a variety of beasts, including lizards and snakes. And all around the world, we know of the stories of serpents turning into people, and people turn it into serpents. We call them mermen and mermaids, dragons, reptilians, a species of the Anunnaki, or demons, even Satan himself. All these beings originate from the different species of the Anunnaki that all had their different regions they resided in on earth. They never left, evidently. Anunnaki is just a broad term to describe the different variety of species that descended from outer space, the heavens, onto earth long ago, aliens. There are the reptilians, the lyrans or cat people, the ant people, the dog and jackal people, the Pleiadians, the Andromedans, the Orinians, Arcturians, the Syrians, and others that are the figures that make up the different species of what is now called the Anunnaki, of whom religion calls gods, demons, angels, and fallen angels. A group that would be responsible for the creation of mankind, the survival of mankind, the near extinction of mankind, the war and chaos of mankind, the supernatural enlightenment and advancement of mankind. They would go on to interbreed with mankind. Like any other being, they were also capable of being good, bad, or both. Today, people who believe they are descendants or reincarnations of such beings call themselves starseed children. The Book of Giants tells of a curse placed on the children of humans who interbred with the Anunnaki, or these fallen angels, a curse that stated that the offspring of this interbreeding would be forbidden from returning to outer space or the heavens, and forever confined to earth, and when they died, their souls would become known as demons. This is how spirits and beings of fox, wolf, jackal, snake, leopard, jaguar, 
and the likes came about. Cam, better known as Ham in the Bible, had the largest family of his brothers, and his grandson Nimrod was the first ruler of all three lineages of Noah after the flood. Cam's lineage was known in Abrahamic faiths for being pagans and or giants because they kept interbreeding with the Anunnaki even after they were forbidden to after the flood. His lineage spread far and wide across the earth, crossing its seas and settling its many lands long before anybody else. If you follow each of his sons and the lineages they were responsible for, you will notice a prominence of supernatural activity in these lands across the world for this very reason. China, being founded by Cam's grandsons, who were both sons of Canaan, Sen, and Keth, who formed the Sinokitan Empire of Kite, or Kathay, on the Yellow River, is one of these places. In Chinese mythology, it is believed that all things are capable of acquiring human forms, magical powers, and immortality, provided that they receive sufficient energy in such forms as human breath or essence from the moon and the sun. Naturally, as time went on and humans began interbreeding with fox spirits, it was said that these fox spirits became humans by wearing a skull and worshipping the Big Dipper constellation. Chinese historian, poet, and writer Guo Pu stated, When a fox is 50 years old, it can transform itself into a woman. When a hundred years old, it becomes a beautiful female or a spirit medium or an adult male who has sexual intercourse with women. Such beings are able to know things at more than a thousand miles distance. They can poison men by sorcery or possess and bewilder them so that they lose their memory and knowledge. And when a fox is a thousand years old, it ascends to heaven and becomes a celestial fox. Since the beginning of the Tang Dynasty in 618 AD, commoners worshipped fox spirits. They made offerings in their bedchambers to beg for their favor. The foxes share people's food and drink. They do not serve a single master. At the time, there was a figure of speech saying, where there is no fox demon, no village can be established. The old Chinese text, Classic of Mountains and Seas, is the earliest record to document the nine-tailed fox. And it mentions that the fox with nine tails came from and lived in the country called Quanku which was 300 miles east of China, modern day Korea. In Korean lore, the fox spirits are called Komiho, who are the result of great longevity and accumulation of energy who have lived for a thousand years, giving them the power of shape-shifting, who possess a fox marble bead, which is called a Yewu Gusu, that contains knowledge allowing the Komiho to absorb humans' energy with it, usually through deeply kissing a human. If a human swallows this bead, then observes the sky, then the land, and then the people, then that person will gain extraordinary power. In Japanese folklore, these fox spirits called Kitsune are foxes that possess paranormal abilities that increase as they get older and wiser. According to Japanese supernatural folklore, all foxes have the ability to shapeshift into human form. While some folk tales speak of Kitsune employing this ability to trick others, other stories portray them as faithful guardians, friends, and lovers. Foxes and humans lived close together in ancient Japan. This companionship gave rise to these legends about the fox spirits. Kitsune can have as many as nine tails. The more tails a Kitsune has, the older, wiser, and more powerful it is. Because of their potential power and influence, some people make sacrifices to them as a deity. Conversely, foxes were often seen as witch animals, especially during the superstitious Edo period which took place between 1603 and 1867 AD and were thought of as goblins who could not be trusted, similarly to badgers and cats. A common belief in medieval Japan was that any woman encountered alone, especially at dusk or night, could be a kitsune. Kitsune gao, meaning fox-faced, refers to human females who have a narrow face with close-set eyes, thin eyebrows, and high cheekbones. Traditionally, this facial structure is considered attractive, and it is ascribed to foxes in human form. Variants on the theme have the kitsune retain other foxy traits, such as a coating of fine hair, a fox-shaped shadow, or a reflection that shows its true form. In some stories, kitsune retain and have difficulty hiding their tails when they take on their human form. Looking for the tail perhaps when the fox gets drunk or careless is a common method of discerning the creature's true nature for humans. A particularly devout individual, however, may even be able to see through a fox's disguise merely by discernment. Kitsune can also be exposed while in human form by their fear and hatred of dogs, just like other fox spirits in other cultures. And some become so rattled by their presence that they revert to the form of a fox and flee. One folktale illustrating these imperfections in the Kitsune's human shape concerns Kone, a historical person later credited with the legendary wisdom and magical powers of divination. According to the story, he was staying at the home of one of his devotees when he scolded his foot entering a bath because the water had been drawn too hot. 
Then in his pain, he ran out of the bathroom naked. When the people of the household saw him, they were astonished to see that Cone had fur covering much of his body, along with a fox's tail. Cone transformed in front of them, becoming an elderly fox and running away. Other supernatural abilities commonly attributed to Kasuna include possession, generating fire or lightning, woeful manifestation in the dreams of others, flight, invisibility, and the creation of illusions so elaborate as to be almost indistinguishable from reality. Some tales speak of Kitsune with even greater powers, able to bend time and space, drive people mad, or take fantastic shapes such as an incredibly tall tree or a second moon in the sky. Other Kitsune have characteristics reminiscent of vampires or succubi and feed on the life or the spirit of human beings, generally through sexual contact. Kitsune Suki is the state of being possessed by a fox. The victim is usually said to be a young woman whom the fox enters from beneath her fingernails or through her breasts. In some cases, the victim's facial expressions are said to change in such a way that they resemble a fox. Japanese tradition holds that fox possession can cause illiterate victims to become literate. Though foxes can possess a person of their own will, Kitsune Suki is often attributed to the ill intentions of a hereditary fox employer or families who are hereditarily sorcerers and witches who employ fox familiars by bribing them. The sorcerer is called a Kasune Muchi, who strikes up a deal with the fox usually by promising food and daily care in return for the fox's magical services. Folklorist Lafcadio Hearn once described the condition of Kasune Suki in glimpses of unfamiliar Japan by stating the following, Strange is the madness of those into whom demon foxes enter. Sometimes they run naked shouting through the streets. Sometimes they lie down and froth at the mouth and yelp as a fox yelps. And on some part of the body of the possessed, a moving lump appears under the skin, which seems to have a life of its own. Prick it with a needle and it glides instantly to another place. By no grasp can it be tightly compressed by a strong hand that it will not slip from under the fingers. Stories of fox possession can be found in all lands of Japan. There are families who tell of protective fox spirits and in certain regions, these families are said to have been able to use their fox to gain fortune. But marriage into such a family is considered forbidden as it would only enlarge the family. They are also said to be able to bring about illness and curse the possessions, crops, and livestock of those that they hate. And as a result of being considered taboo by other families, it has led to societal problems. Kitsune keep their promises and scribe to repay any favor. Occasionally, a Kitsune attaches itself to a person or a household where they can cause all sorts of mischief. But on the other side, Kitsune can also use their magic to benefit their companions or hosts. Typically, the young man unknowingly marries the fox, who proves a devoted wife. The man eventually discovers the fox's true nature, and the fox wife is forced to leave him. In some cases, the husband wakes as if from a dream, filthy, disoriented, and far away from home. He must then return to confront his abandoned family in shame. Many stories tell of fox wives bearing children. When such progeny are human, they possess special physical or supernatural qualities that often pass to their own children. You hear of this commonly with werewolves and the medicine men or shamans of indigenous ethnic groups in the Americas and the Midwest who are able to transform into wolves or werewolves and back human again. Same thing applies to the descendants of fox spirits. Other stories tell of Kasune marrying one another, an event that causes a sun shower in which rain falls from a clear sky. The Nine-Tailed Fox first appeared in China and possessed a woman named Daji, who was the favorite concubine of King Zhao, the last king of the Shang Dynasty, which was the second dynasty to have sprouted from the Yellow River Valley civilization and what is now called China after what religion calls Noah's Flood. Daji was from a noble family of Yusu. When King Zhao invaded Yusu during his early reign, he took Daji as his prize and became extremely infatuated with her, to the point of neglecting state affairs just to be with her, and was at her beck and call as if he himself was under some kind of enchantment. Daji had a love for animals, so King Zhao built her a zoological garden with several rare species of birds and animals and would order musicals to compose and choreograph lewd music to satisfy her. Along with this, he constructed a luxurious pool filled with wine that had meat hanging alongside it just for Daji. It is now called the Deer Terrace Pavilion and is called the Pond of Wine and Forest of Meat and serves as a Chinese idiom for excessive extravagance and indulgence. King Zhao was so infatuated with Daji that at one point he gathered 3,000 guests to this pond of wine and allowed the guests to play the cat and mouse game nude in the forest just to amuse Daji. When another concubine who was daughter of one of his lords named Lord Zhu protested, he had her executed and had her father rounded into pieces and his flesh fed to his vassals. The thing was, 
Dodgy enjoyed torture and executions. So these violent acts of King Zhao was for her entertainment. She would reportedly laugh at every single execution and her, herself, was quick to be violent and quick to torture. In order to fund providing these pleasures to Dodgy, King Zhao implemented heavy taxes, causing his people to suffer greatly and lose all hope for the Shang Dynasty. At one point, she noticed a farmer walking across ice barefoot, and so she ordered his feet to be cut off just so she could understand how he was so resistant to colder temperatures. If that was not bad enough, she once had a pregnant woman's belly cut wide open so that she could see for herself what was happening inside of the woman's womb. When King Zhao's very own uncle, Be Gone, tried to persuade Zhao to change, he died at Daji's doing when she had his heart cut out to examine if the ancient saying of a good man's heart has seven apertures was true. Daji would go on to invent her very own method of torture called bronze toaster. This method of torture involved a bronze cylinder covered with oil that was heated like a furnace with charcoal beneath it, causing its sides to be extremely hot. The victim would be forced to walk slowly on top of these heated cylinders and forced to shift his feet in order to not burn. But the oily surface made it difficult for the victim to maintain their balance and if the victim fell into the charcoal below, they would burn to death. She obviously has some type of foot fetish, which is why it is not coincidental that the practice of foot binding is said to have originated with Dodgy. It is said that she created foot binding to hide her fox feet. And because other women did not know why she wrapped her feet, the woman of the court naturally imitated the most powerful and most beautiful woman that was at the king's side. With all this influence over King Zhao, Daji single-handedly brought a reign of terror to the Shang Dynasty, which led to its downfall and the Shang Dynasty's army losing to King Wu of Zhao, who took over and became the first king of Zhao Dynasty in ancient China. Daji was executed by King Wu after King Zhao was killed. Following her death, her head was hung on a small white flag to symbolize how she had became the downfall of the dynasty. She became King Wu's excuse for taking over the kingdom, and as such, the government was restored to its former glory following her death. Some sources, however, say that Daji committed suicide. Many shrines were dedicated to Daji in her fox form by illicit cults that became banned, but banning such shrines proved unsuccessful. In Feng Xing Yang Yi, King Zhao had once visited the Anunnaki's reptilian fertility goddess Ki, who was known as Hathor and Isis in ancient Egypt, Ishtar to the ancient Babylonians, from where we get the holiday Easter and who serves as the Statue of Liberty. She's the mother of the Freemason order of the Eastern Star. She's Venus to the ancient Romans, Aphrodite to the ancient Greeks, the original deity representing the star on the Islamic flag, and the goddess Nuwa to the ancient Chinese. Zhao visited Nuwa's temple and offended the goddess with his lustful comments towards her beauty. In response, Nuwa decided that the Shang Dynasty should end and sent her three subordinates to become three beautiful women, including Daji, to bewitch Zhao. Under the influence of these women, King Zhao became a ruthless king, losing the support of his people and triggering his downfall. In Daji's death, it is believed that the fox spirit reincarnated into Magda of Tianzhu, which is ancient India. It would be here where the spirit would become known as Lady Kayo, the favorite concubine of the crown prince, Banzuku. In the Indian tales of Kalmashapada, Lady Kayo influenced Banzuku to become a ruthless, brutal ruler and cut off the heads of a thousand men. After successfully causing the downfall of Banzuku and his empire, she fled the country and entered another young woman, going back to China. In 780 BC, a major earthquake hit Guangzhou, China. A soothsayer named Bo Yang considered this to be a bad omen foretelling the destruction of the Zhao dynasty, which had been started 266 years earlier by King Wu, who defeated King Zhao of the Shang dynasty, whose favorite concubine was none other than Daji. So here we are 266 years after King Wu of Zhao executed Daji, and this is when the fox spirit reincarnates again around 780 BC to get her revenge from her previous life after finishing her bidding in ancient India. In 779 BC, just one year after the major earthquake and Bo Yang's bad omen foretelling, a concubine named Lao Shi entered the palace and came into King Yu's utmost favor. She bore him a son named Bo Fu, and King Yu got rid of his wife and son, Queen Shen and Prince Yenji, and made Bao Shi the new queen and Bo Fu the new crowned prince. It was said that Bao Shi was not easily amused. After trying many methods and failing, King Yu tried to amuse his favorite queen by lighting warning beacons and fooling his nobles into thinking that the Quan Rong nomads of the northwestern state of China were about to attack. The nobles of course arrived to the castle only to find themselves being laughed at by none other than Bao Shi. Obviously, anybody can see how reckless and insane this was of King Yu to do all for the sake of making his wife laugh. And to make matters worse, 
After noticing how impressed by she was, he continued to abuse his use of warning beacons and ultimately, this caused him to lose the trust of his nobles. The epitome of the boy crying wolf. Former queen, Queen Shen's father, the Marquis of Chen, was furious at how his daughter and his grandson had been removed from their titles and tossed out like last week's news. And so he decided to mount an attack on King Yu's palace with the Quanrong nomads and surrounding satellite states. And when King Yu called for his nobles via the warning beacons, nobody came because they believed it was just another hoax like all the previous times had been. King Yu and Prince Bofu were both killed. Bao Shi was captured and assumably also later killed. But we do not know for certain as there is nothing documented about her after it is noted that she was captured. Queen Shen son, Prince Yenji, was restored to his rightful place as prince and went on to become King Ping. Because the national capital at that time had suffered severe damages and was located near the potentially dangerous Quan Rong, in 771 BC, King Ping of Zhao moved the capital eastward to Luoyang and this was the beginning of the Eastern Zhao Dynasty making King Ping the 13th king of the Zhao Dynasty and the first king of the Eastern Zhao Dynasty. <laughs> After bringing down King Yu, the fox spirit was quiet for some time, but would reappear as Tamamo no Mei, the favorite concubine of Emperor Toba who reigned from 1107 to 1123 AD. Tamamo no Mei was a beautiful woman who was said to be extremely intelligent and able to answer any question that was asked. She used this intelligence to make the emperor extremely ill, allegedly she poisoned him, and she was exposed as the fox spirit by an astrologer named Abe no Yasuchika, who had been called in to diagnose the cause of the emperor's poor health. A few years later, the emperor would send legendary warriors Kazusa no Suke and Marira no Suke to kill the fox in the plains of Nasu Japan in the Tochiki prefecture. It was here where the fox spirit of Tamamo no Mei embedded itself into a stone in the same plains Tamamo no Mei had been executed in. The stone would go on to be called the Sesho Seki or the killing stone. It was a stone that continually released poisonous sulfuric acid killing everything and anyone that touched it. Just recently on March 5th of 2022 the Sesho Seki split into two causing a crazy frenzy on social media. A length of rope that had been secured around its circumference was lying on the ground. Someone noted that they felt like they were seeing something that should not be seen. It was a post that attracted almost 170,000 likes. It is believed that after 1,000 years, the nine-tailed fox spirit has been released back into the world once again to wreak havoc. And no, we're not talking about Naruto. For more discussions of conspiracy theories or odd and unusual things that happen on this planet or in outer space or anywhere, please like, comment, and subscribe. I will not let you down. Also, what are some conspiracy theories you would like for me to talk about? Because I've heard a lot, but obviously I haven't heard them all. Please comment down below and let me know.